Welcome back, everyone. Today, we're continuing to work on our eight liner locks. Actually, two of them are frame locks, but we're going to set them to the side. But at this point, we have got our backspacers all profiled roughly down to the liners. And, you know, a lot of our work done as far as our holes, pivots, and that kind of stuff. But the next thing I want to do is cut the stop pins, the lengths of them, and the pivot links. Now you can do this two or three ways, however you want to do it. You can do it with a drill, like I've got one chucked up here and you saw a clip at the beginning of the video, go over to your belt grinder or whatever you use for sander or even a desktop bench grinder. Or you can put them in a mill with a collet block with an end mill and cut the links. I've done that before and I still do. Or you can put them in a lathe and cut them with an end mill in a chuck and you go into the end of it and cut your length. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go over to the lathe and cut them, but glad you're joining us, let's get to it. All right, so I've got the pivot in a collet, in a collet block here. I know this will make machinists cringe, but this is how I do it. And I do a lot of work this way. And over here, I've got a chuck mounted in a tool post and an end mill. Now I'm using a 5 16th here, but you could use anything, you know, pretty much, I'd go double the size here, uh, you know, up to a very large. And I'm just gonna come up here, cut it. I've got it marked here with a scribe mark and I can see it when it's spinning very clearly. I'm gonna cut down to it and we'll clean it up and check it out. All right, so we got our pivot in there. One thing to note, when you cut your pivot length, make sure it's below the surface of your, the outside of your liner. If not, your pivot head will bottom out on your pivot and cause it to spin. You, you wanna be able to tighten it to a certain, you know, tightness to operate your blade at the, you know, wherever you like, but you don't want it to to spin your pivot. So come down about five thousandths. Now I will cut the stop pins same way that I cut the pivot. And like I said, you can do it with a drill. And I also have to cut these heads off. So a lot of work, but this one I've already done. I haven't cut the links or the stop pin, but I've got the pivot in there with the pivot head. And you know, still a lot of work to do. I have to come in here and notch for the thumb stud I'll cut all the rest of them and basically the same way and we'll pick up on cutting the liners. We're going to cut the lock bar rather. We've got to get that done and start setting our lock up, cutting our lock faces. One more thing, when you're cutting screw links, this is a real easy way to do it. This is just a sacrificial piece of steel and I've got a threaded, this one, 256 screw in there or you know 256 threads and I can set it to the length I want and I come over here to the disc sander first I take some in nose cutters cut it because that's where I want it at and we'll put it on disc sander and cut it smooth I can cut any length I've got these for all kind of size screws makes a real quick work of it and pretty accurate
All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and cut the lock bars. And I've never made these small liner locks before, like I've said, and I can't no cut them like I normally do with my big abrasive wheel cutter with a quarter inch arbor. So I've got a small abrasive wheel with a one eighth arbor. Now that's gonna be a lot of pressure. This is a small screw that holds it and uh, it's gonna to be tough. But I've got it set up here in the mill vise and I use a couple of pins, actually the bits that I use to drill the holes and I do that so when I set it in the vise, I've got something to, to line it up straight, parallel. I've got a couple of bars here that I will take out, pull the pins, and then we'll cut it. And I'm running slow and there's a lot of pressure, so I don't know how this small arbor is gonna hold up, especially with the small screw. A lot of fun. So I'm lucky I had another mandrel and I'm not finished. So hopefully I can get these others all cut without having any more of that. I, I kind of figured that was gonna happen. I mentioned it. Um, it's just a lot of stress. I'm running slow. That thing's made for high speed, like 20,000 RPM and I'm running a thousand. So uh, it, it's too much pressure and running too slow. So I really got to take my time. So I did get it cut. I'm going to try to get the rest of them cut. I do have some 1 8 mandrels on the way, just in case. And then I'm going to release the lock bars next. I'm going to go ahead and cut them, and we'll get the detent installed, and we'll start getting ready to cut the lock faces. Now, when I go to cut the big ones, I'll go back to my big mandrel. There's no problems there. It cuts just fine. So... It happens.
All right, with all the lock bars cut, now it's time to grind lock faces. And what I'd cut them on is around seven and a half degrees. I think seven to eight is good, but seven and a half works great for me. I just use a level, this little digital, cheap digital level, zero out on my platen, set it at seven and a half degrees. I run slow, I use a 120 grit belt, and I use optivizers to see what I'm doing. You wanna sneak up on this. If you overcut it, you're done. You can't stretch the titanium. You, you can do some things that don't look good, but just take your time and uh, you'll get it right. I'll take three or four trips to get this. We get this and cut and get her locked up. All right, so we got our first one locked up. It's early lockup, which is what I like. And of course, I always test it to make sure that lock is solid and don't break loose. And there's plenty of room there. So I've got all the rest of them to do, of course. But just a little quick tip for you. When you grind in that lock face, you want to lock up on the very top side, not up in here. So you're going to have a slight angle on that lock face you'll you, you want you don't want to have the whole lock bar making contact just right here at the bottom or top whatever you want to call it here you don't want to be contacting all the way you'll have sticky lock all kind of problems caused from that so looking pretty good got a lot of work left to do all of the handle grinding the blade a lot of polishing finish work dressing it up we'll be jeweling inside the liners but we're gonna to have to do that on the next one we're out of time please leave a comment if you got any questions i want to thank you for watching thanks to my patrons and we'll see you on the next part